and uh, I will sing of the moon. Good morning, church. It's good to see you all on this wintry, wintry morning. I uh, appreciate your coming out on a chilly day. Um, we have the opportunity, of course, to uh, be encouraged uh, by each other and also be an encouragement as we offer up our praise to the God who is faithful, as we just mentioned in that short song. Thank you for being here. If you're visiting with us, we look forward to getting to know you a little bit uh, if you're able to stay around after services. But if it's convenient for you now, would you please stand as I read the uh, morning scripture from Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you. Please be seated. I just ask all of you to uh, clear your thoughts of other things as we go to our God in prayer. Please bow your head as we uh, give this prayer. <clears throat> Almighty Jehovah, here is our prayer this morning on behalf of the Kirkland congregation. Thank you for blessing us with the freedom to worship you. We strive to follow your word in all that we do. We'd ask that you be with our preacher, Ben Keen, whose heart and passion is to bring us your word from the Bible in sermons and classes. And Father, bless our elders, Mark, Brad, and Todd, whose awesome responsibility is to watch over the entire flock. Continue to be with all of our members, Father. This world is not easy right now for a Christian, but nothing is new under the sun. The members here support one another, whether one is in physical, or spiritual illness. And Lord, be with our parents of our youth. So much negative information is out there, non-Christian ways of living to try and divert their growing minds. So let us submit ourselves to God and resist the devil and he will flee from us. Let me repeat that, Father. If we resist the devil, he will flee from us. But let us come near to you, Father, and you will come near to us. Well, we have to remember the need to stand firm to the end. And one can look back and say and know that it was worth it. Our beloved brother, Richard Radke, who passed away from this earth recently, made that choice in his life and is now into your fold. We would want to choose you, Father, to spend eternity with versus having that soul-sucking devil win over our souls. We offer this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may have seen in the Kirkland Family News that uh, we're going to have a different order of worship this morning, a prayer service, so looking forward to that. But we're going to use these next two songs to prepare our minds to partake of the Lord's Supper. 
uh, before we begin that. And me by Christ.
This morning in the high school class, we were talking a little bit about prophecies in the Old Testament that relate to us today. We looked at Isaiah 53 and how it talked about all of the things that were going to happen to Jesus. And then moving into chapters 54 and 55, prophecies of the church. Isaiah was written 600 years before Jesus came. And then in the New Testament, Jesus talks about being the bread of life years before he was actually uh, um, crucified. And then that fateful night, just before Judas left to go uh, uh, get the soldiers to grab him, he instituted the Lord's Supper. One of the last things he did as a group with his disciples before he was crucified, and he asked them to remember him. And he asked us to remember him because he asked them to keep doing this. So now we are, 2,000 years later, part of God's plan, partaking of the Lord's Supper every time as often as we meet to remember that he is the bread of life and his blood is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So with that in mind, let's give thanks for that bread that represents his body as it hung on the cross. Let's pray together. Almighty, all-powerful, omniscient Father, thank you so much uh, for our lives. Thank you that we get to be here today to worship you in a way that, that we hope that you deem pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, thank you that we get to gather around the table and that we get to reflect on prophecy made from long ago that leads us to this place we are now um, because you were willing in your graciousness and your mercy and your long suffering to send your son to this earth to die for us in our place so that we could be brought back in right relationship with you. And this morning as we take this moment to honor you and praise you, and make much of you, Father. We remember what Jesus did on the cross. And we remember how his body was battered and beaten and, and brutalized so that we could have eternal life. And as we take this bread, Father, please help us remember that. The great sacrifice that was made for us on our behalf so that we could one day celebrate with you in heaven. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
We'll now give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Please bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, you are good, you are just, you are righteous. We know that it is better to give than to receive, and you demonstrated that by sending your son for us, and he demonstrated that by shedding his blood for us. Please bless this cup as we partake of it, and please help us to remember it throughout the rest of the week and the rest of our lives to continue on that sacrifice as, as we remember it. It's in his name that we pray, Jesus, amen. 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 I love to tell the story. Um, we're going to try to keep, I tried to pick the songs to theme along with the scriptures that are going to be read and stuff like that. So we'll try to keep our continuous thoughts focused on what we'll be praying about today uh, through song or prayer or scripture. And a song. Uh,
the There was a woman of great faith who lived a very, very long time ago, and her simple desire was to have a child. And she watched as those around her had children. She watched as her husband had children with another woman. And her only desire of her heart was to have a child. You may know of this woman. Her name was Hannah. We read about about her at the beginning of the book of 1 Samuel, and her son eventually becomes, spoiler alert, the, the prophet and judge Samuel, who was a man of great faith. And you read the story and you think, how could he not because of his mother's faith? But as she was distressed and as she was persecuted to some extent by this woman that her her husband had children with, she goes to the temple. She goes to the tabernacle then. And and in 1 Samuel 1 verse 10, she greatly distressed, prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and a razor shall never come on his head. And God answers that prayer. And in 1 Samuel 2, you can read this beautiful prayer of thanksgiving, this song she writes. And Hannah sets this example, this tone for women of faith throughout all of, all of the, the scripture. You see in, in Luke, you read about Anna, this woman who was widowed at a young age, and she spent her whole life in the temple praying and fasting. You read about Mary herself when when the angel approaches her, how readily she takes this life-shattering, life-altering news that she's going to have a virgin birth and give birth to a son who is going to be the savior of the world. And she praises God in song and in prayer. I bring up these women and these examples of prayer because we as a church, we look around at the world around us and we can feel hopefully distressed. Distressed by the state that, that that more people don't know the good news. Distressed by the state that maybe we don't feel as directed or as engaged or involved in the work of sharing the gospel as we would like. I hope we feel that as a church. And what we're doing this morning is instead of me getting up here and prattling on for too long about how you need to be better at this, where the elders thought it would be, the shepherds thought it would be beneficial for us to spend time in prayer, asking God to direct us and asking God to inspire us and lead us and, and help us in our efforts as we want to be and are driven to be a church that is unified in our efforts to seek and to save the lost. That's why we read Matthew 28 at the beginning of this, when Jesus said to his disciples, and said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age." This is our hope. This is the mission we want to be set upon above all other missions. Every other engagement or or service or action or or determination or plan we make as a church, it falls under the umbrella of this ultimate goal that it will equip us and strengthen us and renew our efforts to make more disciples and to be a people who are given to that above all else. And so we're going to pray about that. After I, um, I'm done speaking, I'm going to pray about it. And then we're going to sing a song, and then Todd's going to get up and read from John's gospel and pray about it. And then we're going to sing another song, and then Mark is going to get up and read another scripture, and we're going to pray about it. 
and then we're singing another song. And Jesse, our, one of our deacons, who's really involved in the, in the work of organizing and helping us as a church be evangelistic, is going to read a scripture. We're going to pray about it. And that's what we're doing instead of a sermon this morning. And honestly, I think it's time well spent. And so I hope that our minds and our, and our hearts will be engaged as we do this. One last scripture I want to read, just to equip us, maybe some direction. We're going to be praying that God would send us seekers, that God would put us in places to share our faith. And when we find ourselves in those situations, I want us to reflect on these verses that the Apostle Peter gave us to equip us to be disciple makers like he was. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 13, he says, Who is there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? He's making this point that if you stand up for your faith, if you speak the way you ought to, who's going to hurt you? And the true answer is, Peter, a lot of people will hurt us. People will look down on me. People will call me names. People at work won't eat with me at the table. People at school will think I'm a weirdo. There's all these people who will hurt me, Peter, in different ways. But that's not the point he's making. He says in verse 14 of 1 Peter 3, but even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. And do not fear their intimidation. Do not be troubled. Verse 15, 1 Peter 3, 15, but sanctify, set apart Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. And keep a good conscience that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ Jesus will be put to shame. Do you see what he says? Always be ready. And the thing that, that we set in our hearts as Lord over Christ is fear, fear of rejection, fear of what it might mean, fear of the vulnerability it takes to really share and to say, this is my hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That's my hope. And we fear stepping out and we get intimidated and troubled. And Peter says, you need to put those lords aside from your heart and put Christ as Lord on the throne of your heart. And everywhere you go, Every place you find yourself in, every person you find yourself to talk to, remember who is Lord and always be ready when they see how hopeful you are based on that to say, this is who my Lord is. Simple verses, but I hope that when you find yourself in a situation with seekers or around people who need to hear the gospel, remember these verses and in some way, small or big, subtle or not so subtle, perfect or imperfect, verbose or concise, share. That's our mission. So I'm going to pray about this, and we'll sing another song, and then Todd and Mark and Jesse will follow up, and then we'll have our usual end of services with the giving and with the announcements. That's what we have ahead of us. Please pray with me as we think about these efforts. Lord God of heaven and earth, the one who created everything, God, you are our rock. You are our hope. When we are distressed, when we are aimless, when we feel ill-equipped or... Uh, just weak to the task ahead of us, Lord. We come to you because you are our strength. You are our light. You are our direction giver. You are our foundation and our fortress, Father. You are our anchor. And Lord, we need you. I need you. We as a church, Lord, we need you to direct us and to guide us and to show us the way forward that we might be the people who aren't just faithful, but who are faithful in, in sharing your mission and sharing the good news about your son, Jesus Christ, how he's changed our lives, how he's transformed us from hopeless people into to people who are, to a people who are hopeful and optimistic and joyful in this world that is everything but. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son. Thank you for his sacrifice. Thank you for giving us as a gift your Holy Spirit to dwell within us and to make us like you, to bear fruit that we might be like you, Lord. May we give you credit and glory and gratitude for those things so that the world will know that you sent us and that we are yours, so that the world will know you through your Holy Spirit in us, through Jesus Christ living in us, Lord, through truly you being within each one of us and through you being in us as a church, Lord. That's our hope. Father, we pray that you'd send us seekers. We've prayed this for years, and you have been gracious and faithful to answer. You have sent so many people our way who just want to know you. And Father, we're so grateful and so humbled that we get to work in your fields. Lord, sometimes we feel ill-equipped, and we feel uh, not sufficient for the task at hand. But we pray, Lord, you would give us grace, pour out your grace, and make us sufficient, and make us adequate, and give us the words and the spirit and the heart and the desire and the courage and the energy to be tireless in these efforts, Lord. 
Truly, our goal singularly would be that we would every day use every moment and every breath, every ounce of energy you give us to, to show and tell others how great your son is. We forget, we get tired, we grow complacent, and Father, please forgive us. But as you send seekers our way, Lord, may you equip us as well to be a church where they will find you living in us, and where they will find you in our words and find you in our efforts, and even in our imperfections, Lord, we pray your grace would pour out all the more that they would know you. That's our goal and our mission, and Father, it's huge. But you are bigger, and you are stronger, and Father, we trust in you that you would not give us this mission if you did not know and believe and see that it would be fulfilled through us. Lord, we are grateful. You have put before us something that we may not choose on our own, and Father, we pray for the strength and the courage to fulfill your ministries in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this church, and thank you for the shepherds and each member here and the efforts we all put in together. May you be glorified, and may your name be great in what we do. All this we ask through the Son, your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing, Send the Light. And oh, so there's a call. Words of that last verse of that song, let us gather jewels for a crown above. Uh, it's so perfect for the verses we're going to read. Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 4, and uh, we're going to look at one passage of scripture there. Uh, in John chapter 4, Jesus leaves Judea 
and he goes up through Samaria to Galilee and he has an interaction with a, a woman at the well and he talks to her and has a dialogue with her and tells her some things about uh, the multiple husbands she's had and uh, says some miraculous things to her that she would, or he would not have, most people would have not known. And uh, she goes and shares this news with others and they believe on him. And uh, I wanna read to you from John chapter four, verses 31 through 38. And I'm gonna be reading to you from the New King James Version. John 4, 31 through 38. The Bible reads, in the meantime, his disciples urged him saying, Rabbi, eat. So here it is, the disciples are thinking physical. Jesus is gonna go on, he's gonna be thinking spiritual. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is this, to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the reaps, uh, excuse me, behold, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are ready are already white for harvest. And he who reaps uh, receives wages and gathers fruit to eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I have sent you to reap that for which you do not, have not labored, others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. Let us all bow together. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this morning where we could come and worship you and give you the glory that you so deserve. We are so unworthy of being in your presence, but yet your son has shed his blood for us and we can be there and stand before you today. And we're so thankful for that. We're so thankful for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who lived perfectly and showed himself uh, so wonderfully and, uh, and, and perfect in every way, in the way he dealt with everyone. We pray that we would emulate him in every single way. We thank you for the blessings of this life uh, that we have, our families and our kids and grandkids, our jobs, uh, the way you provide for every single need that we have. We, we praise you for it and we thank you for it. We thank you for this church that you have blessed us with, uh, the many brothers and sisters in Christ here, the many people who uh, do so many wonderful things for each other, the service that we provide to one another, uh, we're so thankful for that. We're thankful for the bond of peace that we have in this, this group, and we pray that it does continue. We thank you for these recorded words that we just read from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that we would emulate him and those words in every way. We pray that he would be our endeavor in this short life that we've been blessed with. Help us to realize how short this life is and how urgent it is for us to fear you and love you and love others. We thank you for the many wonderful teachers and, the, and preachers in this congregation that help us and we pray that you bless them. Help us to look for those who are searching for you and your truth. Help us to be mindful of those people Help us to do all your will in all things and share the gospel as we have just read. Help us to continue to build on the work that others have made and to be diligent. Help us to see and find those who are searching for your son and the truth of his word. Give us that mindset and to be ever watchful in this world. Help us to have stamina, help us to have energy and help us to have uh, the, the faith to keep working and run the course that you would have us to do. Help us to keep working in faith and in love in the unity of the bond of peace here at Kirkland. Help us to not dis get discouraged by the distractions of this world that would pull us away from the priority of serving you. Help us to keep our eyes on you and not ourselves and the cares of this world that so easily entangle us. Help us to labor to the end. Help us to find those who are searching so that they may be in heaven together with you and us, and we pray for that effort here today. And help us to remember that, that is our job. Help us to have your eyes, help us to have our eyes on heaven and our desire for others to get there as well in that eternity. 
We look so forward to our heavenly home where those many dwelling places are that you have described for us in your gospels. And we look forward to it. We, th- we pray that our top priority, priority in this life is you and all that we do. And we look forward to our heavenly home there with you. God, may you continue to bless each one here in this family. May you continue to care for us. May we be mindful of each other and serve one another and and look to the needs of others. Help us to represent the light of the world, your son Jesus in all ways. Help us to remember the urgency and not to delay, not to be slothful, just as we read, to share the gospel. In his name we pray all these things. Amen. Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom? Are you sowing? Sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother. Thank you, Josh. What an excellent song. And as we are continuing on in our evangelistic seekers theme service, I'll be reading from the book of uh, Colossians, chapter 4, verses 2 through 4, where uh, the inspired apostle Paul is writing. I'll be reading from the New American Standard. Verse 2 Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up to us a door for the word, so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned, that I may make it clear in the way that I ought to speak. Would you all please pray with me at this time? Our gracious Father in heaven, Father, there are so many people who do not know you. And each and every day brings an opportunity to share the good news with someone. 
and tell them of your great gift of a blessed life and eternal salvation in Christ. Father, we confess that many times we do not know who to share the good news with or when to share. Yet we know the fields are white under the harvest and there are many who are in need of your salvation, Father. And we ask that you would show us who to share the good news with, whether it is someone in our lives that we are close to already or a stranger who we may never see again. We ask your guidance, Father, and boldness to share the good news with them. Father, we pray that we would have hearts that are responsive and moldable to your guidance and alert to those around us. As we share with others, we pray for your saving power in their lives and for their salvation, that they may come to know the love you have for them. Father, you have shown us the clearest image of your love for us through Christ. Though he was sinless, he died in the place of sinners. Though he was God, he humbled himself and took on flesh. He became like us that he might take our place and free us from our slavery to sin and spiritual death. Father, you remind us in your word that there is no greater love than to lay one's life down for your friends. And Christ showed us the ultimate form of love by going to the cross for our sake, and not only for us, but for everyone. We pray, Father, that your love displayed through Christ will be evident to the world. Please make yourself known to them. Remove the veil from their eyes. May you open a door of opportunity in our lives to share your truth with others who are seeking. May they understand the mystery of Christ. Father, please give them ears to hear, and eyes to see your goodness and your grace. Lead them in your love and bring them into your kingdom. In the name of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Zion's call.
Evangelism is a scary word. Uh, for a lot of us, it'll just make us start to sweat thinking about it. Um, there's many different levels of what evangelism is, though. And um, I want us to, to think about that for a second so that we don't uh, dismiss uh, the power that we have within every one of us to evangelize in our own ways. Um, basically, each one of us is a light, and that is evangelism. We've seen that child song, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, right? Like, take it down to the most basic level, right? This is evangelism. Every single one of us is doing this in the world. You know, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said um, that, that we are the light. And um, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. If each one of us is a light, how bright does that light shine in the world around us? And what is the power of that light that we have? Um, I'm gonna read uh, a passage. It's gonna be from John chapter 17, verse 13 through 26. And as I, as I read this, um, realize that this is the last thing that Jesus is really gonna be teaching to his apostles. Because he knows as he's saying these very words, he knows that in just a few minutes, he's going to be betrayed and that the, the, the end game is in play for his life. He knows this. You know, if, if you know that your end is here and you have a couple words to share with people, before that happens, what are you going to tell them? This is what he says. He says, but now I am coming to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's us. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you've given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you've given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you've given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you've sent me. I have made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Please pray, pray with me. Dear God Almighty, creator of this world, creator of all things that we can see or touch or feel or know, creator of the mind, creator of love, creator of the greatest things imaginable, Lord, we come to you because you've loved us. We come to you because you've given us your son. We come to you because where else can we go? Lord, we bend our knee to you. And we know that you're a king and that your power will reign over this world forever. Lord, we know that it's through Jesus' words that our joy may be, made, be fulfilled. And let us not fear the hate of the world, 
but count it joy when we face various trials, Lord, as it produces endurance and strength and steadfastness. Lord, we have been chosen by you to go out into this world, this world that hates us, just as Jesus has first gone into the world and he paid the ultimate price for it. Lord, it's through his sacrifice that this world can be united. And we now are one under his banner. Let us be one. Lord, let us be one. Lord, let us be one. Let the splintering of your believers across this globe be glued back together, Lord, through your word. Let us be bonded back to Christ so that the world might believe that you sent your Son and that you also love us in return. Let us make known your name to the world. Let us not be fearful, Lord. Let us not uh, hide our lights under a basket. Let us not be afraid to utter your name in public. Let us not be afraid of the things of this world, Lord, where moth and rust destroy. But let us keep our eyes on things above. Let us share the beauty of those things that are above with the world around us that's in darkness, Lord, and that has no hope without you. Let us show them the hope and pray, Lord, that you bless us all and bless this church in these efforts and in this community. Lord, we love you, and it's in your son's name who did pay that ultimate price for us that we offer this prayer. Amen. We're going to use this next uh, song as our invitation song, and I realized the very unique opportunity in front of me because Ben is normally up here to offer an invitation. So you now get an invitation from a song leader. So um, I would encourage you to not let these, uh, these prayers and these messages go to waste this week. If you, if you leave this building and you dim your light a little bit or you hide it uh, while you're out there in the world, I would encourage you to use uh, these songs, these prayers, these messages to brighten that light. And I'm sure that if you need some encouragement, if you want someone to talk to, if you want to just uh, pray with someone, I'm sure our shepherds in the back or Ben would be uh, ready and willing. And as we sing this last song, let's go ahead and remember that this world is not our home. And if you would stand with me while we sing this song. And, uh, this
seated. So in a minute, we're going to uh, give thanks for the blessings that Jesus has given us, and we're going to pass the plates around. If you're visiting with us here this morning, we're not looking for a, a donation. If you had a visitor's card, you can stick it in the plate. If you have a prayer request, uh, write your prayer request down, put it in the plate, and the, um, uh, those prayers will be taken care of in the back and will be prayed for in our closing prayer. Um, this week, uh, I was in a conversation, and a guy said something. I thought, ooh. This is going to be good for the giving on Sunday. So afterwards, tell me if this helps or not, and, and please critique me. What did the person say? They said, drive it like a rental. You're like, what in the world does that mean? You've, you've heard it another way. Drive it like you stole it. Well, we all know what that means. So when you go get a rental car, you're not concerned about keeping it clean. You're not concerned about how many miles you put on it, how much tires are left when you're done. Like, oh, I got the cool car. I'm going to let all my friends come and ride with me. We're going to go on a joy ride. This is awesome. Uh, you let people eat in the car. It's fine. You share that blessing of that rental car with whoever and whatever, right? You drive it like a rental. Your own car, you'd never do that. You get a new car, you don't let anybody even ride with you. You don't let the kids eat in the car. I mean, it's like you keep it in the garage. You move everything away from it. You wipe it with a diaper because you want that thing to be as awesome and cool as forever. Well, everything we have from Christ Jesus is on loan to us. It's a blessing. It's like that rental that came with a full prepaid tank of gas and the upgrade. It's the cool cars in the lot that people don't usually rent. And that's what he's given us. Do we take these blessings that Christ gave us? And are we stingy with them like they're ours and we're going to get to keep them? Or do we drive it like a rental and let this blessings flow out from us to other people because they're not ours. And when we go meet our maker, we're not going to take any of that stuff with us. And none of us have ever washed a rental car. You know, we just don't. So are we going to treat the blessings Christ Jesus gave us as our own and we get to keep them? Or are we going to share the blessings of that free rental? Because that's all this stuff is. It's a free rental. So let's think about this as we give thanks for all that Christ has given us. Let's go to our God in a word of prayer before we uh, give back. Our righteous Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity this morning um, to give back a portion uh, of what you've given to us. Lord, as uh, Mitchell just described, we know that everything here on this earth uh, is on loan to us, that the time we have in this world is temporary. And Lord, we ask that as we have this opportunity to give back, we uh, remember that. We remember that you created this world, that you created us, that you gave us everything here in this world, and that, Lord, it is just a small bit of time that we are here, uh, that we have on this world, and that we hopefully, Lord, are with you one day. So, Lord, as we think of it in that way, we ask that we give back a portion that you've given to us that we are cheerful givers, that we are open, that we are thoughtful, and Lord, that we um, realize that, uh, that, that these are temporary blessings to us. Lord, as we take up this collection, we ask that uh, you help guide us, that we use the, the, the funds and the resources uh, here at this congregation in a good and right way. Lord, that you help our leaders and all of us do things in a pleasing way to you. Is, that's what we're always striving to do, to understand you and understand your word. Lord, we ask that uh, we also use these resources in a way that uh, we can shine a light in this world, Lord, that we individually and as a congregation can shine a bright light and that we can help others understand you and come to you and embrace and love you, your son and your word, Lord. Lord, as we take up this collection, we hope that each and every one of us can remember all these things. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I was driving back from Oklahoma one year and uh, actually driving from the airport down to the school that I go to and I actually did wash my car when I got there. Okay, so there is one person. See, you can always find little nuggets from things, right? All right, so thank you, Mitchell, for your words on the table this morning and for all your uh, thoughtful prayers this morning. And uh, uh, we just appreciate you all so much. Ben, thank you for putting this together this morning. Appreciate you uh, and your efforts. And thank you to everyone that's here today and making this your priority instead of other things your priority in worshiping God. Um, days are getting short and uh, life goes by quickly and this is the most important thing and that is being together with friends and uh, people like Precious Faith. So we just thank you so much and don't think you're not important because you are and uh, you mean a lot to me and I hope I mean some to you um, and uh, we're just so thankful for this family here and uh, all the work and the love that you show to one another. And uh, you are all important and it means so much uh, to each one of us here. Um, I wanna thank uh, all the gentlemen who participated in the worship service this morning. Uh, we are so thankful for you. Thank you uh, for being here this morning for our class. Ben did a great job and we're starting a class on Jesus and the Old Testament. There's a schedule on the back table there for that particular class. We're going to go for about six months, and Ben and Jean will be uh, leading us in that discussion, so we look forward to that. Uh, tonight, uh, Brian Givens will be here. Brian is a, the uh, uh, one of the elders and also the preacher for the uh, Mount Vernon Church of Christ, and he will be preaching to us tonight, and his title of his lesson is Resolve to the Local Church, and so we look forward to that. And uh, he's got a lot of good insight in, in that lesson. And so I encourage you, please, to be back here at 5 p.m. for that. Uh, we do have prayer cards in the back back there. Uh, if you ever have a prayer request, um, uh, please uh, make sure that you put that in the plate or let us know. Um, Charity asks us to pray for wisdom and discernment and self-control in words and actions and Certainly we will do that. Charity, we appreciate you so much. And we all need that uh, same uh, kind of uh, idea and thought in our own lives. And so we'll be praying for you on that. Um, this Wednesday night, uh, Ben will have one more week, I think, of Psalms. And then we'll uh, move over to the book of Proverbs and the, Sol uh, the, the wisdom there of Solomon. And then on Wednesday night as well in the back classroom, Matthew is being taught, Mitchell is leading that, and he's gonna be wrapping that up shortly. So we look forward to uh, Wednesday night as well. Uh, I want you to notice on the back table, Gene will hold it up, the prayer list that's back there. Please uh, make sure that you're grabbing one of those for your daily prayers. Uh, uh, this is such a good thing, and Pat puts this together for us, and there's so many people to be praying for. You think, ah, there's nobody to pray for. Well. <laughs> That's not true. That, that list is, is extensive, and there's so many people that need uh, to be prayed for. So let's be doing that. Um, this coming, um, uh, in two weeks from today, uh, Mark, Brad, and myself will have the State of the Church Address, and that's January 28th on Sunday morning, so we'll incorporate that into our, uh, our Lord's Day, the Lord's Day that day, the 28th. Uh, on February 24th, uh, at the uh, at this building. In fact, uh, we are going to have a memorial for uh, our brother Richard Radke, who passed away here a couple, three weeks ago. And uh, Richard was a uh, 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 just a wonderful gospel preacher for many years, had a great influence on so many people. The, the, the threads of his work have run deep here in this area, and we're going to miss him. But we'll remember him on February 24th here at the building at 2 p.m. So if you want to put that down on your calendar, and there, there's no potluck planned at this time. Um, let's continue to pray for those in our family who are hurting. We've got lots of people who are hurting. Uh, pray for Jim, my brother Jim. Uh, went and saw Jim the other day. He's looking great, and uh, let's keep praying for him. 
pray for our brother Clinton. He's uh, still recovering from rotator cuff surgery. He's been pitching too many times. That Those fastballs are just there, but he's recovering. No, I'm sorry, Clinton. Uh, but he's doing great. And uh, let's keep praying for our brother Mike and Liz. Liz is back there. Liz, we appreciate you so much. And uh, we're just so thankful for you. Uh, pray for Pat. Brian Cooper, he's going to go through, through some more uh, cancer uh, treatment there. Pray for him and our sister, Judy Payne. So we have a busy year ahead of us this year. Uh, Rise and Build is our theme, and uh, we're going to be looking at that this year. So let's be working, uh, get to work, and uh, get, get, get busy and doing the things that you can do. In the back in the foyer, there's some cards. I was thinking about this as we were uh, preparing for this this uh, service today uh, on evangelism. There's some cards in the back that uh, Brett had made up uh, and they're just really wonderful to put in your wallet. And these are good things to pass out to people to, to spark a, a conversation about uh, the gospel and different things. There's also some big picture uh, cards there. So, you know, that's a little thing that you can do and you can pass those out and you can tell them that they if you don't want to do the big picture of the Bible or if you don't, you don't feel comfortable doing that, well, let me know. Let Ben know. Let Mark know or anybody else here that's willing to do that. So that's something you can do. Okay, we've had a great day together. Appreciate you all for being here. Please stand with me as we uh, are dismissed in prayer. And Lord willing, I'll, we'll see each other here tonight at 5 p.m. Uh, we'll worship God again together. Let's all bow. Our great God in heaven, we're so thankful for you, and uh, we just are so honored to be in your presence here today and to worship you and to give you the glory that you deserve. Uh, what a great God you are, and uh, we're just in awe of you as, our, as we get older and uh, we become more knowledgeable of things in this world and things all around us. We just see the greatness of you. Uh, we are we, we yearn for you, we grow for you, we pray that we would always be uh, looking to you for everything that we do and say. We're so thankful for your Bible, and we pray that uh, we would read it and understand it and get to know you and your son uh, each day. We pray that our faith would increase and um, that it would be such a part of our lives. We pray for uh, the parents in this congregation as they uh, our examples to their kids. We pray that uh, you would help each one of us as parents to be uh, mindful of our example and uh, ever, ever knowledgeable of things in this world and, and um, the, the, the impact we have on our, our kids. We pray that you would help us to be a good example to them. We pray for our young people in this congregation and around the world that are going through difficult times. Uh, we pray that you'd bless them. We pray that you would Help them to rely on you. We're mindful of the, the, the kids and the young ones in this congregation. We pray that you would bless them in every single way and that you would help them. Uh, we're so thankful for the blessings of children, and uh, we're so thankful. We pray for those who are hurting in our congregation here. We pray for Jim and Liz and Gary and Mike and uh, Clinton and all those who are uh, hurting and recovering from different things. And we pray that you continue to bless them and, and give them uh, uh, good health. We thank you for your word, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to evangelize and to spread your word. We pray that you would help us in this effort, as we've talked about this morning, to, to spread your word, help us to be lights in this dark world, and help us to be ever watchful and ever looking for opportunities to spread your word. And we pray for uh, the men here that work in our congregation as deacons. We pray that you be with them. We pray that you would be with Mark and Brad and I as we uh, shepherd this church. We pray that you bless us with wisdom and discernment. We pray for Ben, and we, and we pray that you bless him as an evangelist, and we pray that you would give him uh, a measure of knowledge and wisdom and keep helping him and in his work with us here. And we're so thankful for him and his work. Uh, we pray for the men or for the young ladies here that are that are about to have babies. We pray for Haley and Sophia, and bless them in these last uh, few months of their pregnancy. Father, please forgive us of our sins. Help us to see things that are wrong in our lives and to move those remove those things from our, our lives. And we pray that we would stand before you pure. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.